The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Sounding bad, feeling good. Let's take a quick look here at this gold market, folks. Uh, once we went above that 1500 level that we talked about uh, on Tuesday, it was pretty much clear sailing. Uh, we had a tiny bit of resistance at 1508. We went through there like it didn't even exist. We're now at around 1514. The interesting part is, is that gold is one of the more uh, susceptible to lunar cycles than anything else. And we have a new moon with a solar eclipse coming in here today. Very, very important. And another thing, folks, if you do the silver charts, go back to look and see the last time we had a move like this uh, in silver. It measured to 1803. We've been as high as, uh, I believe, 1808. 1810 is the 50% retracement. So I certainly can't recommend going long the gold and silver in here, even though they could go go straight up. We're up 13 days in a row uh, in the silver market uh, just by itself. So that in itself is makes it very, very overbought. But, you know, it could stay overbought for a very, very long time. That's for sure. We want to remember that because it's uh, very easily to see that happen. Let's just take a look what this is going to look like today for those of you that are out there in the stargazing mode. We'll bring up here to let you see. Uh oh, one second here. We got to change the venue just a little bit. There we go. Here's what it looks like. There you go. <clears throat> There's what that solar eclipse is going to look like uh, at different parts. It's actually visible uh, in the uh, Northern Hemisphere, I think, uh, from what someone said, but you can go online and check that if you wanted to take a quick look at it. Another thing that's happening that I think is relatively very important, and that is uh, if we look at the Bradley date, and we'll bring this up here to see, you know, where we are, you'll see here where we we're looking at the Bradley model. Now, go back to last year, folks. Remember, we had that huge rally after the first of the year. Well, look what's happening now. We're uh, right in the Bradley zone right now. Uh, right, right. You can see it right now. We're right at that level. So it's going to be really interesting to see if the market explodes to the upside from this level again, which it certainly could, or whether it's going to invert this time and possibly move to the downside. We really don't know that. I've done a lot of Bradley. Well, I've done every Bradley model uh, since we had good data in the stock. which was uh, before in the 1870s, we started getting data from the uh, New, York, uh, news, New York and Philadelphia newspapers and then later on the Wall Street Journal, you know, to get pretty good data. But uh, that tells us that, you know, these things do work, but they don't work uh, all the time. I wanted to go back uh, and take a look at history. Uh, well, just, just, just look at the longer term history on some of these things here. But here's one. This goes back all the way, going to go back about 25 years into uh, – 19, uh, 1966, uh, you'll notice here, I, I just want to show you the patterns that you're looking at. You can see the three drive to a pattern that bottomed there in October and December. There was a double bottom. That was later on in life, I would, I would realize, <laughs> much later, 20 years later, I would realize that that double bottom was a double conjunctions and oppositions on October and December of that year. That was one of the reasons that got me really interested into the astro aspects of this stuff. And I was working with uh, some of the folks out of uh, Pittsburgh at the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, Gertrude Shirk. And it uh, really gave me an idea later on. I mean, I, I, this was 10 years later. I didn't get this until, you know, 86 when I was working with uh, Dr. Ruth Miller. But just looking at these old patterns, you're going to see, you know, that they're really, really very interesting. The main one that I really wanted to bring up to you is the fact that if you'll notice that the low we made there in 1978, in March of 1978, and then the low we made on August the 12th of 1982, that was just a slightly lower low. If you'll notice, look closely on that those red uh, market coming down, you'll see it's a beautiful three drive to a bottom pattern. It's setting exactly at the 61% retracement from the low of 1974. And from there, 
Uh, we went from a little bit higher in the Dow at 720, I believe, all the way up to 28,500 and counting. So uh, that was a major, major bottom. And all of those were absolutely major cycle things related to the harmonics of the uh, of the move. So yeah, the Bradley model, it works part of the time, but when it works, it works really good. Uh, the, the, the dates themselves are pretty good, but sometimes the trends get a little upset. Now take a look here. This happens to be, since we're talking about this, I wanted to spend a little bit of time this morning because <clears throat> it's important. Uh, you'll notice that we had this uh, three drive to a top pattern back in 07. That was in October of 07. The most significant part of this chart was on the high right there that week. Uh, uh, Bernard uh, Ber uh, Bernanke uh, came on and uh, said that, you know, all, all systems go. Everything looked great. And from there, the NASDAQ gave back... Uh, uh, what did it get back? About 75%, and we lost 60-some percent in the S&P 500. You'll notice here, uh, this is the uh, Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average, uh, and we bottomed in, uh, you know, 2000 uh, and uh, uh, eight or 2009 in March, and the Dow was trading at uh, 6,600. So uh, that's how far down we came uh, from this. But uh, when it does work, you know, it works pretty well. Now, you'll notice in June, you see where that low was made. That was an inverted market, and then it went up, and then it came back and tried to make a low. I missed it by just a little bit, but overall, it does a pretty good job. And so we're at one of those points right now, and we're also looking at the, uh, you know, these different cycles that we have. Not just the lunar cycle, which is the solar eclipse and new moon we have today, which is the, you know, the 20, uh, 28 day cycle. You you're having uh, that Mercury is in there too. It's really you know moving around. Uh, Norm Winsky pointed that out in his uh, uh, talk that we had on. We had him on for uh, well, actually Dan Ap because of technical problems. But um, th there's some really heavy cycles in here. This is a uh, very very important days that we have have over the market uh, right now. So we'll see. <clears throat> we'll be up. This is yeah. This is only the fit. There's there's. Uh, I think there's, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but you know that there are five Sundays and five Mondays in the month of December this time, which is, that doesn't happen again for another 823 years, I think I heard. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's that. Let's let's move on. <clears throat> I want to. I have to discuss this thing about open interest because I tried to do a lot of information on, uh, you know, what's going on. Well, let me get this up here to, uh, to see my uh, market up here. Here's the open interest. I wanted to show you this, folks, because I think it's important. This is the open interest in the uh, uh, E-mini S&P as of uh, the, the 20th of December. <clears throat> this is where, at the close, there was only 589,000 open interest versus 2.7 million in the March. Very, very important, okay? The next thing you want to do is to take a look at what happened to that open interest as we went through. Now, here's here's where my uh, red lights came on here. Look look at this here, folks. Th this is where, uh, and I, let me get, let me, we'll get right back and talk about this again. I think it's important, so I, I, I'm going to talk about it. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I'm on my little little horse riding the open interest story. I posted in here what the open interest has done. You noticed the other day it was three point, almost 3.2 million. Now it is uh, 2.7. We've dropped a little over uh, 600,000 in uh, open interest, and I wanted to bring to your attention what happened. Uh, if you'll just give me a second, I'll bring it up. What happened on uh, Tuesday, the day before Christmas? Again, we had another. Uh, drop in open interest uh, that day also. So it's it's very interesting, folks, that uh, this open interest is dropping at a time when, uh, uh, you know, prices are going higher. What Because I couldn't get any information off the Internet from anybody saying, gee, this looks very interesting, and I went back and compared. So I called Chicago to ask him, is there anything in the, the contracts that have changed that would make it? And the, the guy said, no. He said, there's a cash settlement for the S&P. In other words, if you bought the S&P last week, say on Thursday, and you carried it through uh, till Tuesday and didn't even take off the trade, when it goes off of expiration, it's a cash settlement. So if it's up at 32 uh, 21 then that's the price that you get you don't have to do anything as far as liquidating your contracts but that still doesn't account for the fact that open interest last week was setting at 3.2 million and now it's 650,000 less so there's 650,000 less players in there folks and if you go back to John Murphy's book and take a look what that means is if you come up and look at this you'll see that if open interest Open interest is falling. You'll see the second link where I bracketed it off in blue. If open interest is falling and prices are rising, the market is weakening, and that's what we're seeing here uh, in the in the all of the indices, especially. Uh, they no, they don't mean they don't they don't roll. That means they did not roll the contracts, Bill. That's exactly right. In other words, there were uh, 620,000 people that left the market. That's long and shorts. But because the market's going up, it's short covering, and that means the market's in a weakened condition. We've seen this. You know, I've shown you this stuff. I don't want to you know beat the beat the horse any more than I already did. There's some other things that they're interesting that's going on in the market. If we take a quick look here, this is a real interesting one too. Oh, I think I can do this real easy. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, wow. Did that post that easy? Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness. Look how much time I could have saved. Well, did that post okay, the put-call ratio? Oh. 
I bet it were. It did work. Shut the front door and raise the rent. What a great Christmas present. This is, it didn't, oh, it didn't post, huh? Yeah, it did. Sure. I'm getting it, Marshall. It, show, it showed that it, per, it posted perfectly. Did the put call ratio uh, chart, uh, well, that would make my life a lot easier if it posted. Uh, it really didn't post? Uh-oh. Then, then I got to do it another way. Post it as a picture. Huh. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it the old way. Get it up here. And here it, it'll work this way for sure. It should work that way, but I don't know why I didn't. All right. Here's the uh, put call ratio. What you can see here, we made new lows uh, back into January of last year where we had the put call ratio at pretty much the same price. So we're at very, very extreme levels. You need to, uh, to keep a... Uh, uh, keep an eye on that, especially with all these cycles that are that are due at this time. And I think it's important to remember, uh, you know, what's going on. Sorry for the, I have a little bit of a sore throat and stuff, folks, but I wanted to go through some of these other patterns and some of these other things astrology-wise that we don't cover too often. Here's the, uh, this is the S&P going back to uh, 1958. I bring this to your attention just to show you these patterns have worked for a very long time. You'll notice that we had the one, two, three, four, five expanding tri uh, three drive to a top pattern that was also expanding uh, triangle because four was lower than two, two, three was higher than one, and five was higher than three and one. That's a three drive to a top pattern and a five point reverse wave. And the, the, uh, during the time of 1973, uh, that's when the market went down and made that double bottom down there in October of October and December of 1974, and then we made the other bottom in, in August of 82. But if you just went and did the ratios on these, I think you'd be quite surprised to see that these Fibonacci numbers are still just a much, pretty much spot on doing what uh, they were doing, and I think that's why we have to keep reminding ourselves that they don't work all the time, but they work more often than they fail, and that's the that's the key uh, to looking at it. We have a question about the Bradley model. Why does it invert? Well, uh, Norm says it's because of the uh, inversions that happen because of the retrograde planets moving, and that's certainly possible. I, I don't know the answer to that. The way I try to use the Bradley model or you know, the key dates because it uh, it does pretty good with the key dates, and we are certainly over one of the major key dates right now, today, and tomorrow. So we'll see if, and, and believe me, uh, if you come in Monday and the market's up really strong, you know, you, and it might still be strong, you know, by the by the time we finish today, um, you, you know, this thing could literally go up a lot more. You don't know, because when they fail, they certainly move, and we've got to, situation monetarily that the Fed can do almost anything they want as far as, uh, you know, keeping interest rates low or whatever they want to do. At least that's what they're trying to tell us. So we'll see whether that's going to be the case or not. We've had a chance to take a look at Bitcoin here this morning. And as we look at Bitcoin here, You'll see here that we've we did hold that low at 6,400. That took out the low of uh, early November, right there around Thanksgiving time. We we took that low out by just about 50 points at 6,400, which was a 61% retracement, almost spot on on the long term uh, charts going back uh, a year and a half to two years ago. But if you looked at it logarithmically from the start of $100 a share in Bitcoin, that was a 382 retracement. So just like the gold was so important at that 382 level, that's the same reason why you have to pay, you know, very close attention to uh, the same thing in the uh, uh, in the other thing that we're that we've been watching here. Let's just take since we're talking about gold here because we've cleared 15, uh, 15, 12, 15, 10 very easily. And uh, you'll see here that we've got above these levels, uh, the 78% uh, level of the move uh, comes in around 15, 17, I believe. And we're having a really strong move today. So that will bring us up uh, near this level that we're looking at. Uh, uh, what looks like toast? I don't know what means what that means. Uh, Marshall, so you tell me what what looks like toast. Gold, gold doesn't look like toast. It looks like it's uh, it's actually acting pretty good. You know, it's 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 running up pretty much. Once we cleared 1500, there was nothing above it that uh, would make it. We've we've gone. You know, uh, yeah, Bitcoin. 
Uh, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, uh, actually, if you look at a longer term, Marshall, uh, that 6,400 is a really big figure, and we came out of there really strong, saying it's important. If we go back below 6,400, it would not only look like toast, it'll look like burnt toast. But right now, it's still acting, you know, relatively well. Whether that's going to be the case or not, you know, I don't know. It's Boxing Day over in the UK, so there's hardly nothing open over there in Europe. There's uh, currencies are moving around a little bit, but other than that, there's not too much yet. Not too much happening here. So we've got a break coming up here. Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're going to take a look at the Hang Seng Index, the weekly index, going back to 2018. You saw we had a big break, uh, almost went to the exact 61%. A retracement missed it by about uh, 200 points and then rallied up exactly to the 61% retracement and then came down and almost made a double bottom in August. And since that time, Hong Kong has been under uh, extreme pressure. It started about that time when the uh, rioting started and the folks that are uh, arguing about uh, who should run 
long. And you'll notice that the high that we made here in the rally just a week or so ago came in at 61% retracement. But I want to spend just a moment to look at this chart very closely. Here's one of those things that you hear about, about Warren Buffett and buy when there's blood in Look down there in August how bad it looked with that big gap down. It looked like it was going to go down forever. That was the bottom of the market, folks. And all during that time, there was nothing but turmoil and, you know, all kinds of bad things happening in Hong Kong. And yet the market rallied from 25,000 all the way up to 28,000. You know, that's a big rally. And the rumor is from China, from what we're hearing from uh, our friends over there, is that George Soros was the was the short position in this, and he was hurt really badly. Now, if you believe that, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge that I've been saving for you, so please contact me, and I'll be able to sell those to you at a very, very wonderful Christmas price. Folks, that's stuff when you hear about the news. Those are reporters just trying to get their name in the news most of the time. For first of all, if George Soros wants to know what wants you to know what he's doing, he's probably doing the exact opposite. Because if he's doing something, you know, in the markets, he certainly doesn't want people to uh, know what he's doing. I know sometimes, you know, he'll say that I'm selling and, you know, he's buying. We see that all the time. Warren Buffett is a master of that. And uh, but uh, when you hear that in the news, you know, take it with a grain of salt, folks. Really look at the charts. If Look at all during that time of all that rioting and stuff. The market was rallying, for heaven's sakes. You know, that really doesn't, uh, uh, you know, that's not. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Peek is saying that is not his real name and he doesn't trade anymore. I don't know any of those things. That sounds like conspiracy theory stuff. So I'm going to stay away from that. Hold on one second, folks. <clears throat> okay. 877 -9 Two sevens. I want to move on here to uh, cover a couple other things that we're, we're watching very closely uh, in the futures market, folks. Uh, keep a very, very close eye on the cotton. Uh, we've really we're getting ready here. This is the uh, daily cotton chart. We don't trade this. For Mr. Z has been following this very closely, and we just went up to the 50 percent retracement level. Uh, we're at that 68 resistance level. If you like the cotton, the ideal situation, if you like to buy on a dip, would be to see it back off to about 63. That would be a 382 retracement of that big three drive to a bottom. That happened down in August. Hot cotton seven, and now we're up at 68. We rallied a little more than 20 percent. We're sitting right at the 50 percent level. We're up uh, like five days in a row, so we're watching this closely. I don't trade cotton, but Mr. Z has uh, piqued my interest once again, and so we're going to keep following it, and he'll be following it in the room here, so pay attention to what he does, because it is uh, all we need is a little bit of a break uh, down, down, and then a move back up above 68, and this thing could really have good legs. If you look at the rally that we had from December to April of last year, you see, we went from uh, we went from 70 uh, all the way up to 79. That was nine cents. This time we went from 57 to 67. And this time we went 10 cents. So these are almost equal rallies. So now we're due for a correction. So I, I can't buy it into this. So I'd like to see it, you know, back off and make a beautiful ABCD pattern sometime in uh, January or early February. That would be an ideal situation to uh, take a look at cotton. Haven't traded cotton for a long time, but I'm going to be watching it because the pattern looks pretty good. It's tradable. Uh, the situation regarding cotton as trading is so different than it was 40 years ago. 40 years ago, it was traded by a whole bunch of relatives in the cotton pits in New York, and now it's traded electronically, so you've got just as good as a chance as anybody else does uh, trading cotton. So that's uh, another one that looks uh, uh, real interesting. Also, remember the uh, natural gas. I want to bring this up to your attention, too, because we had a really nice double bottom form here uh, in the natural gas that we talked about last week. We got down to that uh, 219 level. Uh, we're now back above that substantially. We're trading around 226. So as long as we stay above 219 in that natural gas, it looks like it could have a pretty good chance here you know, to have a, a pretty good move to the upside. Someday, I believe natural gas is going to be, you know, trading about eight or nine. But uh, whether that happens in my lifetime, I don't know or not, because it's very clean energy and there's a whole lot of it. But with, with the solar energy and some of the other things that are happening, you know, maybe we won't need that kind of energy. 
energy. I don't know. With the green peace coming, you know, anything's possible, I guess. So we'll pay very, very close attention to that one. Also, another one that I'm watching uh, for the new year. One second is this hopper, because uh, we're up here in this area where copper should be running into some pretty stiff resistance. I don't know what it's doing now, but around that 286 level, we have some major ABCD patterns. In fact, I haven't checked copper in the last couple of days. Would someone be kind enough to uh, let me know what copper is trading at right now? Because at 287, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty interesting uh, possibility for a short at that level because it was a really great buy down there at 260 that Mr. Z was talking about uh, quite a bit of the time. So let's uh, let's uh, someone give me a heads up on where we are at 284. Okay, we're very very close. So we're been a couple cents away and of course we've got the uh, gold and silver are running pretty good right now into this solar eclipse and new moon i'll tell you that that's a really big cycle folks in in this gold and silver so i think it would be really interesting to uh you know pay uh, pay close attention to it when you uh when you watch these charts because that's a, a very very uh, sorry for the phone, folks. I can't turn it off. I, I got a new, uh, uh, what do they call these, uh, smartphones, and I'm not smart enough to turn the darn thing off. So <laughs> my my wife usually takes care of that for me. But we'll we'll hope it's not bothering you too much. I know it rings a little too loud, but uh, there we go. There was nothing more than a uh, hit the little button on its side. Uh, yeah, I tried that. It didn't work. <laughs> okay, I. I'll try it again to see if I can get it to work. I'm just not a technical person, but you know, I've survived this long. I guess I'll, I guess I'll be okay. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, it's the one on the opposite side, maybe. I'll try to figure it out. I've only had it a little short period of time, just a few days, so we'll see what uh, see what happens with the uh, with the rest of this. Oh, someone asked. Uh, oh, <laughs> someone. Asked, oh, we got a we got a break coming up here pretty soon, but. Uh, I had a couple of Christmas stories that I wanted to share with you from the old Drexel days that I think you would, uh, I think you would really enjoy to hear. But uh, we'll do that when we come back from the break. If you have a question, please call 877-927-6648, and I'll be happy to answer it for you if I can. And uh, uh, one of the questions people were asking me about the you know negative interest rates, folks, that's just you stop and think that's common sense. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I just don't understand that. That that breaks every single rule of finance. Don't be concerned on the return on your money. Be concerned on the return of your money. And they're they're making they're, you're paying them and they're giving you no guarantee. Hello. Eh, eh, eh. Judge's ruling, not a good idea. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is the perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, I've been asked to share a couple of old stories from Drexel days, and Christmas time is always one of the best. We had a retail broker there, uh, Gene Fairman, and uh, he was... Uh, been with Drexel for quite a while. He had worked for Reynolds and Company for quite a few years and then switched over to Drexel. He'd been there about 10 years by the time I got there, which was in, in 76. And we were having a Christmas promotion for uh, one of the orphanages uh, in Los Angeles that one of the uh, big big wigs at uh, Drexel was uh, promoting. And they, they started to have a little contest about which of the brokers could give the most um, – give the most money, you know, to the charity. So they had a contest that anybody that uh, that won this contest, they would get a uh, they would get a round the world trip, uh, all expenses paid. And so they started bidding on this thing. Of course, remember this is 1979 and things are he 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 a heck of a lot cheaper uh, then than they were now. But uh, it got it quickly got to fifty thousand dollars. Then it got to seventy five thousand dollars. Then it got to hundred thousand dollars, and then it stalled there. And we had about three weeks to go in the thing. And one of the Milken guys, I don't know, it wasn't Mike, but it was one of the other guys that was in the, the group. It wasn't any of the big four, but it was uh, one of the big, big boys. All those boys made a million bucks. I mean, that was nothing to make a million dollars up in that floor. Anyway, we got to about, oh, I think it was about $200,000 bidding. And Fairman came in one morning and he said, okay, he said, I'm giving $500,000 for these tickets. <laughs> And everybody says, "Are you nuts?" And he 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 was that was just about all he made for the whole year was 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 around it was around five hundred thousand dollars. He's going to give the whole thing. He said, "I'm going to give the whole thing," and so he did win. He won the whole thing. And uh, what what was really interesting was is that after he did it, uh, Drexel picked up the tab for the whole darn thing. All right, we got a caller. Hey, shut the front door and raise the rent. John from Oakland, Michigan. John, how are you? Larry, I'm great. I haven't had a chance to call you in a long time, but uh, well, thank today's you. the day I wanted to get in with you. Hey, Good. the reason for my call is I saw a story, I want to say it was last week, that someone had bought a huge shot of gold call options. And here's what it said. Somebody plunked down a million and a half dollars to buy 5000 June 2021, not this June coming up in 2020, but June 2021, four thousand strike, four thousand dollars strike price, gold calls. Have you seen that story? Have you heard that? 
Well, John, I know the answer to that. I have not heard the story, but there's one other thing I could add to it. It was not me. <laughs> I, I think I, I don't uh, I don't see why anybody. Well, hey, you know, people do a lot of different things, but to sell calls is a better yeah. thing to do. You know, somebody you know took the other side of that trade, but five thousand is a very yeah. you know large. It couldn't have been very expensive. Uh, it had to be just a, a dollar three, or two. Three dollars and fifty. Three dollars. Yeah, three dollars and fifty cents. So someone's got yeah. So someone's got two million dollars to, uh, you know, play back or add or what they want to do. That's what it amounts to. But I I don't believe those things, and uh, yeah. you know that's over my pay grade to try to figure it out. All I know is if and the only way you can make money in options, yeah. is you've got to be an option seller. If you sell the calls. And yeah. you sell the puts, you can make money. But if you buy a put or buy a call, you're going to make money maybe one out of ten times. But usually yeah. it's a losing proposition. You know, Tom O'Brien Jr. and Tom O'Brien Sr. talks about that quite a bit. They have the boys on with uh, uh, TD Ameritrade talking about it. So uh, I, it's good It's good information to, to talk about at a, a dinner party and stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I, I really don't know the answer to that. It certainly could be. There's no question. Well, all you have to do is you look at the open interest and you're going to see where somebody came in there and bought that many because it'll, well, it'll tell you what whether it, whether I they did or not. I couldn't find uh, open interest with that number. And it wasn't a uh, reliable um, publication uh -huh. that I saw that. It was either, and, and I, you know, I hate to throw out the name, but I, I, I look at Investor's Business Daily. I look at uh, barchart.com from time to time. It was one of those types of uh, outfits, I thought. But I, I couldn't find the, um, open, the interest, uh, huh? open interest where, you know, we had that number of calls out there. So, well, you know what I'll do is when we come up to the next break here, which is going to be in about uh, three minutes, what I'll do is I will go into the CME and pull up the calls for that. Yes, for, you said June of 2021? Yeah, June 2021, okay. and it was the okay. $4,000 call. <laughs> and, I don't you know, even think they had a strike well, price at. I didn't I think anything of it. I, I just looked at it. Yeah. I said I can't find anything. Probably you know, but by a bunch of somebody blowing smoke. But you know, 13 days in a row with silver up, gold popping over 1500. And I remember yeah. one other thing. You know, I I keep things in my mind. Paul Tudor Jones and I called you about this probably a couple months ago. Paul Tudor Jones made a call one time on a show called uh, Real Vision. And he said that uh, if gold broke through 1400, it would run to 1700 in a shot. And we mm -hmm. had that, you know, we had that breakout it was a couple yeah. months ago where it broke through 1400 and made yep. a big run, and then all of a sudden just collapsed. You know, come back well, and now actually, all of a sudden it's making a run. Yeah. So I just thought it I'd call you. It only, it only made it. It only about that made a big yeah. call bet, which I can't yeah. find proof of. But uh, like I said, I it was will, a, uh, a, a I will do this, John. It wasn't some goofball thing. So. I will, if I can't check it today, I will check it by tomorrow to find out if there's anything like that in the data. And I, I just been talking to the Merck, so I know the person to call there, and they can tell me. Uh, and they could probably tell me who's on the other side of the trade too. Uh, but <laughs> if with the well, they will. They know the answer to that, whether they give it away or. Uh, you know, that's a little question. Yeah, right, you might have yeah. to, you know, grease a palm or two, but you can find that kind of stuff out. But I will uh, take a look at it. Regarding that gold, you know, that, that pullback was really not a collapse. You know, we dropped about 160 bucks an ounce down to yeah, 15, yeah. excuse me, to 14.45, which was the 382 retracement of the yeah. last low. So that's why gold looks so bullish. I mean, it really does. I mean, it's uh, it's, it's got it's rocking and rolling. I have a hard time buying it today. I did a little last night, you know, just because I knew it was going to get up above 1510 for a minute. But uh, right now, I'm just waiting to see how it handles uh, this uh, next high that we got due in about two hours. We'll see if it does anything. But hey, listen, thanks for calling in, and please call in hey, more thank often. You for I enjoy talking show, to you. I really and, appreciate it. Love listening. Yeah, love listening to you when you have uh, Tom Hugard and uh, David. I can't, David Paul. So, yeah, wonderful. They're very really nice guys. It. And thank yeah, happy you, holidays Larry, to you and your family. To uh, Mark Douglas's uh, DVDs on trading psychology. Yeah, so thanks very much great for stuff. that too.
You bet. Thank you. All right, folks, Take we're going to have another break coming up in here, and we'll see what's going on here. Uh, let's see what we have here with how gold's acting so far this morning. We've been up to almost to 1514. There's a little resistance at 1515. Uh, that's the one that we're sort of keeping a, a little bit of an eye on. But uh, keep, a, keep a close eye at about uh, 1140 today, folks. Uh, excuse me, uh, 1040. Uh, and that's in about an hour, just about, well, 50 minutes from now. Watch the gold because there's a possibility that we might have a little bit of a high coming in at that point. And it'll be interesting to see whether it'll, it'll actually do anything from that level or not. But we'll, we'll watch it uh, closely. Another one to watch, of course, is the... Uh, the E-mini S&P, I think we just made new highs in the NASDAQ, as I recall. I think we did. Yeah, we just did. We just popped up and made new highs in the NASDAQ. And we're making new highs in the S&P, as we should, because we're over a lunar eclipse and a new moon. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, we're, we were talking to John in Michigan about uh, options in gold for 2021. Uh, the open interest, the total open interest in uh, June gold for uh, 2021 is only 17,000, excuse me, 1,718 contracts. So I think 
that person, I mean, you know, I'm not even sure what the strike price is. Let me double check the strike. No, no, there's nothing anywhere near that. So I would, uh, he might be doing it off exchange or a different exchange, a foreign exchange. I don't know, but it doesn't show that in the Merck anywhere uh, at all. So that's uh, my two cents worth. But I will watch it, but I'm not sure how it's going to end up to see uh, what's going on here. Okay, I think what we'll do here, this is the day after Christmas, so we'll just do something a little different here. I'm going to send a few ideas out today because we're over something really interesting now in the NASDAQ. You don't have to wait very long if this is correct. It, yeah, it's <laughs> you're right, Marshall. It's on the BS Exchange. That's the Boston-Singapore Exchange. I, I've used it quite a few times in my life. Okay, here's the, S, uh, the NASDAQ. It looks exactly like the S&P. We should be topping here in the first hour, right around now. Whether we get much above these new highs or not, I don't know. It's all about risk control, but keep a close eye on it. But this is a lunar eclipse, full moon type thing. I want to do the gold one, too, if I can. I think I've got it ready here. I don't know if I do or not. Oh, I don't but it's uh, it's due to top in about 40 minutes in gold. If it's not much above 15, 15, it would be a very low risk short at that level if it does get to there. But we'll have to, you know, do one thing at a time. That's really what we're paying attention to here. You can see here what it looks like from early this morning that I was looking at. I told you that I nibbled that gold from the long side and uh, got out of it a little above 15, uh, 11. But uh, here, is, you see that time we're looking at there? That is at 10.50. That's in about an hour from where we are right now, uh, 1045 to 1050. For up around 15, 15, 15, 16. And, and you, what you do is you wait for it to back off a little bit so you can quantify your risk. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. We'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Bill Meridian on Monday, boys and girls. Bill Meridian on Monday. <laughs>